Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, this is a quick last minute plan on my part. I'm filling in for someone else. I am not currently a 4 H'er, though I used to be. Uh, so my name is Kathleen Hess. I grew up on a small family farm in Massachusetts. Uh, we had chickens, ducks, goats, cows, horses, kind of a nice mix of things. I've moved to Oregon and I think maybe 11 years ago I finally got chickens again. Uh, so I live in Oregon City. I have 35 chickens, 12 ducks, three turkeys, a barn cat, which I forgot to mention earlier, so a parrot and two parakeets. And I think that's everything I have animal-wise. <laughs> so I love animals. I just enjoy being around them. Today, I don't have a really set agenda. I really kind of want you guys to lead me what you want to know. So I want to start by asking, who here has chickens currently? OK, so one of you. Who is thinking about getting chickens? Oh, even better. And why aren't your hands raised? <laughs> You're going to get chickens? OK, great. I absolutely love them. They're, I mean, if you have a cat or a dog, I want to say they're similar but very different. I find with dogs, they to be very demanding. They want your attention. They want to go for walks. They want to play. With chickens, they're really happy just doing chicken things. You still need to take care of them. I recently went away for about a week and a half. My chickens were perfectly fine. I, of course, set them up so I can leave that long, you know, make sure they have plenty of food and water. The only downside is they have their eggs. Nobody's collecting them. And then I had two hens go broody, which is why I have this hen here with three chicks today. <laughs> uh, they are about a week and a half old, in case you're wondering. And please, as I go, stop me, ask any questions you have. I kind of just planned out really high level. This is what it's like to have chickens. And anything you want to ask, I'm happy to answer. So go ahead and do the next slide. You may have a oh, yeah, do you have a question? Or are you just stretching? Uh, I'm just saying that, uh, did you know chickens are the closest alive relative to the You are correct. And did you happen to notice my shirt? My little chicken Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> what does broody mean? So broody means that the hen is ready to have chicks. So her body has hormonal changes, and it tells her, you need to go sit on some eggs. And they'll sit on the nest, not straight 24 hours a day. They'll come off to get kind of a quick snack and water and stretch a little bit, and then go right back on the eggs and keep them warm. So my son and I, this is Alden, by the way, who's helping me. He, we and I were brainstorming on reasons of why to have chickens. So this is kind of our list that came up with all various reasons. The one I want to really point out is become rich. You will not make money with chickens. Unless you have a large scale commercial farm, you will lose money, guaranteed. Um, I spend, I want to say maybe $150 a month on feed. Again, I have a lot of chickens that I'm feeding and that's why. I get a little over a dozen eggs a day right now. And if I sell them for $5 a day, I may be breaking even if I don't just give them away and I actually sell them. But to me, it's more work than it's worth. My chickens are really my pets. They're my relaxation. You know, I have a full-time job. I work at home remotely. And if something about work gets stressed, I go take a chicken break. I just go out there, talk to my chickens, just watch them scratch around. It just relaxes me. So anybody answer what's the reason why you have chickens or you're interested in chickens? Um, I know the, um, the best chicken who played tic-tac-toe. So you've seen a chicken play tic-tac-toe? Well, I, got, I heard of the best one. Nice. I, my chickens have never played tic-tac-toe, so I didn't know that. Very nice. He, he, she only lost five. That's a pretty good chicken. Do you know how, about how long chickens live? Uh, how long? So they live about 10 years. That's even stretching it a little bit. My current oldest chicken maybe is eight. I got them as adults, but I don't know their exact age. And did you have a comment too? Because they want to have babies. Just like your parents, they decided, you know, I would love to have a beautiful daughter or son. 
and they decided that we're going to have a daughter. The hens do the same thing. They decide they want to have some babies, and so they sit on eggs, and that actually helps promote the chicken population, which is what they want to do. Yes, but they need a rooster. You're right, they do need a rooster, or your eggs will never hatch. But even without a rooster, your hen's still going to lay eggs, and they're still going to go broody and want to hatch out those eggs. But they won't hatch. My, one of my grandpas has a chicken that's broody. Oh, is she sitting on eggs right now? Well, probably. Okay. So we can go to the next slide. So if you don't have chickens and you're considering getting them, the first thing you have to do is figure out where you're going to put them. If you either buy them from a, um, a farm store, you know, already hatched, or if you get an incubator and hatch them out, very quickly they're going to need a house. They're full grown in about two months, or mostly full grown. They still have some growing to do. And so they're going to need to, if you have them inside, you're going to want to put them out after maybe a month. You'll be like, this, I'm done. <laughs> they're messy. <laughs> And so the main thing, so if you look online, you can find beautiful, gorgeous chicken coops. They make me jealous. This is what I have. I'd figure out, show, you don't need to be perfect. So this is a barn that that kind of lean to is my chicken area. So I have a coop in there. It's about a 10 by 10 stall. And then I built this run around it. This was my second take. My first take ended up not being secure enough. Everyone wants to eat chicken. It's not just us. So there's, in this area, we have coyotes, raccoons, um, mice, rats, possums, skunks. That's what I see in my yard. I, the main predator I get is coyotes. And while my chickens are locked up securely at night, during the day I let them free range. And that's when they become snacks if I'm not watching. What I've learned with the coyotes, if um, you change the routine around, then the coyotes realize, like, oh, there's no food here, and they'll move on. And you had a question again? Okay, if you remember, let me know. And so some key things you want it, you want it to be draft free. They, it gets cold here in the winter, not so cold your chickens are gonna freeze as long as they can get out of the wind. You do want ventilation, otherwise it gets too stuffy and they'll start to get sick and respiratory illnesses. Plenty of space. And we're gonna stop, you remember your question now? Um, I also eat chicken nuggets. Yes, you eat chicken nuggets. I, we, probably almost everyone in here is eating a chicken nugget. Did you have a question too? Um, no. I, I, I eat eggs with crackers. Oh, eggs with crackers. I've never eaten that combination before. It sounds good. Found it to eat it that way. It, whatever good. works. <laughs> and the last one I put is a free range, is you don't need to let your chickens free range. They are much happier to have space to scratch around. And they'll find bugs and little bits of greenery to eat. If you have neighbors right nearby, they don't want the chickens in the yard, you might not be able to. Or if you have issues with a lot of predators, you might not be able to as well. Our chickens keep getting out. Do you mean to let them out, or they just find ways to escape? Like, yeah, they find ways to escape our backyard. Oh, yeah, mine do. I have a couple chickens, so I have about an acre of land, so I have a good amount of space. And I have a few chickens that like to go over to the neighbor's yard. And there's just, just a couple of them that learn that trick. Yeah, also one of my chickens don't go with the others, but one time they like ran up to like the road where like cars go fast. Yeah, and that's dangerous. I unfortunately did lose one of my chickens because she got hit by a car. So that's a bad combination. Okay, next slide. The other thing, if you're getting chickens, unless you're getting a full adult hen, that you can say this is a hen, you need to have a rooster plan. And I say this because online I see all the time say, hey, I have a rooster who needs a new home. I know most city limits, you can't have roosters. Where I'm at, I'm just outside the city limits so I can have roosters. I only have three. I find that's my limit uh, for noise level and for what makes my hens happy. So if you get them from a hatchery, so if you go to the farm store and get them or order them through the mail, you have a 90% chance that they're a hen, 10% chance you're going to get a rooster. But if, hatchery is 50. But if you hatch out the eggs, half of the eggs are going to be females, half of them will be males. So at the hatchery, they were able to tell which ones are males and females, but it's not 100% accurate. As so you have to decide what are you going to do with the roux. With mine, uh, so I had chicks hats last year. I had three roux that needed something to be done with. One found a new home. The other two went to freezer camp, which I admit I do. Some people don't like to say they do that with theirs. 
Okay, next slide. And so for incubation, so I was so glad to hear that the library is incubating eggs here so you guys can come and see the process. It's so exciting watching them. As I mentioned, this hen with chicks was not planned. She just decided I'm hatching out eggs. Normally I stop them, but I wasn't home to stop her. But so the key thing with incubation is you want to make sure you pick a nice egg. Um, oh, where's my candler? So you're probably not gonna be able to see because it's pretty light in here, but you can take your egg with an egg candler. You can even do it with your phone light. No, it's okay. And I'll, I can pass this around so you guys see closer. And so you can look inside. And this egg, there's no little cracks. The shell looks pretty even. Yeah. So this one's probably good to hatch. Yes, I, I've heard of this. I watched chicken videos. And you can see that little darker spot? Mm -hmm. That's the yolk. And after I'm done, I'm going to let you guys look up close, okay? So I'm going to put it away for now, and you can look later. This is why I brought these in. Yeah, that's hatch. But if you see any cracks, you don't want to hatch it because it's less likely it's going to make it the whole time. If an egg's really dirty, you don't want to do it. You don't want to wash them because they have a little protective coating, which helps keep bacteria out. And then there's something else in there I forgot now. That's all right. <laughs> and then just basic incubation information, since that was kind of what the focus was today, is your temperature. Your goal is 100 degrees. You can have a range in there. You don't want to get higher than 102. I've had, come on in. You don't want to get higher than 102 because you are going to cook your eggs. It can get lower. I had eggs hatch. Um, I had a duck sitting on eggs and something happened to her. The ducks were unincubated for at least four hours and they still hatched out. So nature has a little bit of resiliency in there. You know, if you lose power for a little bit, you might still be okay. And then humidity is also important. You do like a little bit lower humidity at first. And kind of with chicken eggs, what's your question? So you yes, asked what happens if a duck hatches out chicken eggs. The duck will actually still raise them. I had a chicken who hatched out duck eggs, and she raised the ducks like they were her own, and she took very good care of them. And then last year, because I was hatching out turkey eggs, and my incubator stopped working, which is halfway through, which is the last thing you want. But I had a hen broody, so I gave her the eggs, and so she hatched out four turkeys. She has, she's still kind of their mom, even though they're like five times her size. And she still kind of looks over them a little bit. <laughs> so they really do cross species. They do pretty good raising them. If you're, depending on what type of incubator you have, if you have a, one that has an automatic turner, those are great. I love it. I recently got one. <laughs> Otherwise, you need to turn the eggs up to three to five times a day. And that's just to prevent things from settling too much. Then I said you stop turning on day 18. There's a lot of rules you'll see online. Uh, one of them is you don't open the incubator because you're going to disturb it. You really want to open it as little as possible. I am impatient. I open mine probably more than I should. And so far I've been okay. But you do risk, you know, of not hatching because of that because you're changing the humidity and temperature. There's problems you can run into hatching uh, with these chickens here that just hatched out. I had one egg that they got disturbed from my other hens. And so the shell actually got crushed. And so when that happens, the chick can't crack the way they normally do. And so I did, which I really don't recommend doing, is I just peeled away the egg. The reason why you don't want to do it is because there's lots of blood vessels. If you do it too soon, the chick's, chick's going to bleed and not make it. So you have to really pay attention, just kind of do it slowly. But because of that, I was, was able to get that chick to survive. It's one of the ones in there. I don't remember exactly which one, though. <laughs> you want to go to the next one? And so I have, so you can also make a homemade incubator. So this is the homemade incubator I made. I decided later to go and buy one because it's stressful keeping the temperature just right. It was a little computer fan, a like 60 watt bulb was my heat source and just in a foam uh, uh, cooler. And so these are my duck eggs that I mentioned. My duck started sitting on them, something got to her. They actually, the duck did live though, but she abandoned the nest. And so I took the eggs in. And let's see. Was it playing? Oh, it's playing. So I did a little t a time lapse of them hatching out. And you can see once they hatch, they really do move around a lot. Yes. 
Because they're out, they're free, they want to move. But when they do hatch, can you, hit, you can hit play again, Alden. When they do hatch, you want to leave them in there at least until they're fluffy and dry. They have, they, right before they hatch, they absorb the yolk sac into their body, and so that's their food and energy for up to 48 hours. And you don't want to interfere that because they can get an infection. And I've had lost, it was actually a gosling because of that reason. Yeah, this, I, I loved this opportunity because the way I had the incubator set up, I was able to just put a phone right on top and just catch it. <laughs> you want next slide? Okay, so then raising chicks, the key thing is you want your chick to be happy. If you listen to them, and I completely understand chicks. Uh, so all your parents in this, you know, my son came home from the hospital. I'm like, what is this language? I can't understand you. But if it was a chick, I would completely understand what you're telling me and needing me. It was, it was a struggle for me <laughs> to learn human language as opposed to chick language. But you do want to make sure they're nice and warm. Most the standard is a heat lamp. Heat lamps are very dangerous. If I've used a heat lamp, I like it because you get a really fairly consistent heat all in the space. You want to make sure they are secured every way, which way impossible. Um, if they fall down, they can burn the chicks or even worse, start a fire. I recently started using a brood plate, which is really just a little plate it's on legs, and it just has heat just on the top. So the chicks go underneath just like they would their mom, and they snuggle up underneath to get warm, and then when they get hungry, they come out and eat. The one thing I found with that is you do have to show them the heat source, and it takes them maybe a day or two to kind of get the hang of it, so you really have to watch them closely with that. And for you make sure you have clean water, my setup here is a terrible setup for chicks because I have a fairly good sized water dish. When they're little, they'll get in it and get cold and wet. You don't want that. What I'll do, if the mom's not with them, I'll actually put little pebbles in the water dish, just like your standard chick water dish, and that's so they can't get as wet when they get in it. And they have a lot of chick electrolytes. I tend to give them that as well to help give them just a little vitamin boost. For food, you want the chick start and grow. And I'm sure if you had chicks at all, you're going to hear you get medicated versus non-medicated. And I wanted to call that out. If you hatch your chicks out, you want medicated. That medication helps build up a tolerance to coccidiosis, which is a parasite which can kill them. And it's very prevalent in our environment naturally. Don't worry, it's not going to hurt you. <laughs> and so the medicated chick feed has it. If you get them from a hatchery or from a farm store, most likely they were vaccinated for it. And in that case, you don't want the medicated feed because then the medicated feed kind of counteracts the vaccine, which is interesting that it does that. And it's up until 18 weeks they get the chick feed. For me, I do it until I run out of chick feed. It's always around that time. And then I start tr transitioning to the layer pellets that I give them. So for the bedding, generally most people will use shavings. I don't like it because the chicks will eat it. They have a harder time finding their food. And so I don't know if you saw my setup here, what I've recently discovered is I use an old sheet. I can put food all around there. The sheet grips. If you just did newspaper, they're gonna slip. And then what I, I just shake them off in the garden and throw them in the wash machine. This one has had, lots of chicks have been on it and it's perfectly clean now. Because I absolutely love that idea and I encourage it completely. Another thing is listen to your chicks. If you notice now, these ones are very quiet. They're happy. They'll do a happy little peep peep too. They'll, one second I'll get your question. And they'll, they'll cry out, they'll go peep, 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 peep when they're unhappy. And I might see if I can get one to do that for me. And while I do that, what's your question? Um, and also there's chick poop on there. Yes, they do Where poop do a lot. I'm going to see if I can demonstrate what an unhappy chick sounds like. Come here. There we go. So right now they're all snuggly with their mom. Please don't touch them. Okay. She's kind of confused. She's like, what's going on? Hello. But she should start calling for her mom for just a minute here. That's what I'm trying to do. So you can hear a little bit. It's kind of a little bit more of a call. And this is really, she's like, hey, I'm alone. Where's my buddies? And it's hard, I, if I had more... That's an unhappy chick. Yep, she's calling for her babies. 
Okay, I'm gonna put her down now. She's not cooperating well. I think the mom was worried. Here we go. Okay, so sit back down. We're gonna look at them at the end. I know they're very distracting. They also poop a lot too. Yep, go next slide. Okay, thank you. So this, I, I love this picture of this hen. You know, she looks really, almost like a soccer ball. So this hen, if you see a hen like this, that means she's broody. She's poofing up, getting really big, so she can keep those eggs warm underneath her. And so for your hens, when they're full grown, the best food for them is layer pellets. People have done studies, they get the right nutrition level that they need. My chickens get treats. You really generally want treats only to be 10% of their diet. For cheat, treats, you can do like cracked corn. I get um, whole wheat for my chickens. They also get all my uh, chickens uh, tape. Kitchen scraps as well, which they absolutely love. They need dusting areas, so chickens don't take baths. So do you take a bath? Yes. Do you take a bath in dirt or in water? Water. What do chickens take a bath in? Dust. They take a ba bath in dust. And what's your question? Um, I forget. Okay, sorry, I don't get you right away. So if you think about it, let me know. They need space to move around. You'll find, and you just look at her, this hen I have here. Remember your question? Yes. Uh, our chicken, my, my chickens love cereal and cheese. Cheese is actually a favorite thing of chickens, but do you know it's actually not good for them? What? It can upset their digestive system. So my chickens, I do give them a little bit of cheese now and then, but you don't want to give them a whole bunch of it. Why? Because they're not meant to eat dairy. Oh. Their digestive system just doesn't quite know what to do with it. So it's okay. Little pieces are fine, but you don't want to go give her a big clunk, clunk of cheese. <laughs> and did you have a question, too? Because they don't like water. If you put a chicken in water, she is going to be so mad and upset with you. The way their feathers are is to clean them, they put dust on them. What the dust does, it helps get out little bits of other beets like mud, or maybe they get poop on there. Or if they get mites, which is a little tiny bug on them, the dust helps get the mites out. So it's a way they care for their feathers. Or kinds of bugs. Yes, little bugs. Like, so mites is a type of bug. Like, like stick. Yep. They'll probably eat those bugs out too. Or bugs. Or ants. Yeah, actually, I've, I've never found a chicken that likes to eat ants. It's one of the bugs they don't like to eat. Yeah, I don't like it. So just like you, chickens have a preference what they like and don't like. And the other thing I put in here, you want a low stress environment. Uh, one thing, commercial hatcheries, or sorry, commercial egg farms, I absolutely hate. I'm gonna try not go on a rant, <laughs> but the chickens are not kept in their optimal environment. And if you ever look online for pictures of them, you can tell they don't, their feathers are kind of plucked out, they look kind of ratty, their combs aren't quite of the bright red color. And you can just see they're not as happy. They want space, they want less, not so much as kids running around yelling, though they can tolerate that. <laughs> but they just kind of need a calm area. Okay, go to the next one. So first aid, the, I found, when I was looking for pictures, I found this one of my rooster Argentina. I didn't know he was a rooster when he got named. On the, the far side here, he was probably about two years old. You can see he's standing upright. His comb is a nice bright color. His feathers look beautiful and orderly. Uh, fast forward about eight years. This is him on the other side. And again, he was an, at this point, he's considered an old rooster. They usually live around 10 years. He was, I think, eight then. And look at the difference. He's, he's sitting down. His feathers look a mess. And another key, if you look at his comb, which doesn't quite show as well in production on the projector, it's kind of a purpley color, which is a sign he's not getting enough oxygen. Generally with chickens, if you see them like this, it's probably too late to do much for them. Though I always like to try. You know, I'll give them extra boost of vitamins. You know, isolate them so other chickens aren't pecking on them. Oh, but this rooster, he unfortunately actually died shortly after this picture. And I really just believe it was old age and his body was just kind of done. You have another question? Um, one of my chickens um, had a leg that was eaten and we took her to the, um, to the bird hospital. You took him to the, so was the vet able to help your chicken that hurt her leg? We didn't. We didn't. We didn't 
cartoon of vet. It was a bird hospital? Well, like, yeah. So it probably was a vet. So we are lucky. We have in Lake Oswego, there's the Avian Medical Center, if I got the name right. I've taken a couple of my chickens there. They are amazing. The, um, oh, I'm forgetting the doctor's name there, but she absolutely loves chickens. So she's fun. I've given her a couple that she's like, this is an odd chicken. <laughs> With mine, you know, they are pets first, but I also ha grew up on a farm. So I had that realization, I can't save everyone. They're going to have problems. Things are going to happen. I bring them to her when it's an ongoing problem. So normally when they get sick like this, maybe within a week, they're not going to be around anymore. If they've gone longer than that, that I've brought them to her, I say, okay, we need to do something because they're kind of staying the same. I don't want them to stay miserable. I want to help them. You will find another thing online. Um, I'm part of a Facebook chicken group, Oregon Chicken Lovers, which they're great. You can get lots of advice. Some of the advice I kind of wonder and worry about. So you want to see, if any time you search online for ideas or things to do, you always question it. So one common ailment you'll see in laying hens is they get egg mound, which means their egg gets stuck and doesn't come out. And the number one suggestion is to give them a soak in a bath to kind of loosen things up and relax. Chickens hate water. They're not going to get relaxed in a water, in a tub. I've given my chickens soak, but it's more of when they get really dirty. If they get an infection, I want to get it clean. But for the egg bound, it's not going to help. I had one chicken I brought into the vet uh, because she had a fascinating egg bound issue. And what ended up happening is the vet went to examine her. In that examination, it seemed to loosen things up a bit. So she was able to finally pass the egg. But again, in that situation, you're better off to involve a vet. Again, it gets it. That's something you found on the floor. Let's see that. What is it? It's a pin. <laughs> so and it's really your call. Like, how much do you want to invest in this animal? Did you have a question back there? Why are they what? Why are they peeping so much? Are they stressed out? As those, those are actually happy peeps. So they're communicating with their mom, and she's communicating back with them. And I'm not listening very closely, so I can't tell you for sure, but I think it's just general, like, hey, mom, we're good. We're OK. All right, so you want to go to the next one? So again, this is kind of a, this is some resources that I used. Again, there's so much information online. and always question it. Uh, one site I like is the Poultry DMV. There's, you know, fact-based. They have a lot of great infographics. I used them a couple things. So I had to look up here to check on. Um, a podcast that I love is Coffee with the Chicken Ladies. They're great personality. I love listening to them. And again, I don't question what they're telling me. I know they stop and research it. So that's a fun podcast. There's the Oregon City, the Oregon Chicken Lovers Facebook group. There's a lot of great information there. If you post, hey, my chicken's doing this, what can I do to help? You'll get a god of responses. I've done that with a few of my chickens. And I got some good suggestions. Some suggestions, I'm like, I'm not going to try that. So take it all with a grain of salt. <laughs> and as I mentioned, the Avian Medical Center, they're amazing. But they are going to get a little expensive, depending on what's happening. Yeah. And then, of course, I had to throw this in the library. I did look before coming here. They had some good books. I know they have like the Libby app, which I love. You had books available there, and I think for checkout they had a few as well. But I didn't look in detail. So that's everything I have. Um, I'm happy, like I said, I have the eggs. I can show you what to look at in candling. And I want to give you a chance for everybody to pet the chicks as well. That's why I brought them along. But I have a quiz question for you. So I have these eggs that I got from my hens yesterday. And I didn't wash them because I happened to get some that were clean. Sometimes they get a little poopy, and those ones I wash. So who can tell me how long can I keep these eggs like this on the counter and they'll still be good for? How long do you think? Until they hatch? Until they hatch. So to hatch, what, you remember what I said about incubation? Um, 28 days. But what else do they need for incubation? Um, can you go back a little bit, Alden? They, they need to stay warm. They need to stay warm. Do you know? So they need 100 degrees out. So do you think it's 100 degrees in here? No. Yeah, so these ones will not hatch. Why? Because they're not warm enough. Well, only if they get warm enough. Yes. 
So who else wants to guess how long could these be good for to eat? So whoever gets closest gets these eggs. That's, the, that's your prime here. Seven days. Seven days, okay. What's your guess? 13 days. Any other guesses? Closest one wins, by the way. Two months? Five days? Okay. So if you ate these eggs five days later, you would be fine. I forgot what your guess would get them was. 13. 13 days and yours was seven. Seven days would be good. 13 days they would good be good. Um, they say two weeks is good on the counter, which is great, especially when you're getting a dozen a day and you don't have the space in the fridge. If you put these in the refrigerator, they would be good. I think it's three months. And again, this is because they're unwashed and they have a little protective coating on them to keep bacteria out. So before you leave, you can take these eggs with you if you want them. They're freshly laid. You can make a great breakfast with them. You're welcome. But I want to give people a chance to look at them with the egg candle first. You have a question? Um, you know, I do too. So I had, I washed my eggs yesterday because they do get poopy, so I washed the poopy ones, and I had 10 dozen that I washed. So with 35 hens, I get a little over a dozen a day. <laughs> you have a question? I, I don't know. I looked it up recently, and it said a week in the fridge hard-boiled, which almost didn't make sense to me. Like, if they're cooked, they should last just as long as uncooked. But I am not a food nutritionist at all, so don't go by me. 